Emily Kinner and Suburban Nation. The project Suburban Nation is um, a series that I was inspired by by the Midwest and it's a series of uh, full-scale modular homes and some back porches and installation and then also an awning. Well, a lot of my artwork is inspired by the environment, and so um, this project in particular, I think I had um, been doing a lot of work in Chicago and, and driving a lot, and I, you know, the, the modular landscape is kind of everywhere out here and well, across the nation, and I think that repeated form became something that I started documenting, you know, um, like by photograph and then drawing and sketching, and I think trying to resolve that modulated structure on the horizon kind of brought that series about and I think um, the three installations at the museum are kind of like the the final of that series. Since I use such familiar objects or imagery I think people it's very dismissed in everyday life and and actually I think I kind of am drawn to that because you know you can take something and when you recontextualize it in a museum setting that's like part of you know the way I work of how environment can completely change an understanding and I think you know the mundane has always been really interesting and I think these objects are so mundane that I was interested to see how people would respond and, and if I had an expectation it was more maybe what they were gonna think because I I mean I have kind of how I view them, but almost every person that came to it had a different understanding, which is, you know, sometimes good, sometimes, you know, not so good. Probably in the security archives here at the IMA, there is a video of me. Um, we were in the final stages and we were uh, finishing the homes, you know, it was all, you know, um, manufactured material and we were setting the lights I couldn't figure out there's this um, shadow on one of the roof lines and it turned out it was a, a fine layer of dust had settled when we set the doors and so um, no one was around and the cherry picker was gone so I thought well I can get on this ladder so I climbed up and you know you're not supposed to be on the top rung and I'm on the top and I hop onto the roof and I'm sitting there you know it's the ceiling is what 22 or 24 feet and there's all these security cameras which I was totally oblivious to so I'm up there vacuuming with this little nozzle all the shingles on the roof just meticulously and I'm probably this close to the security camera and I get stuck up there I can't get back down and I'm like panicking and then finally I realize the security camera is right there and I get like really close I'm like can you get somebody down here? And right then I hear the cherry picker zooming in and they're like, yeah, we've got an artist stuck on top of our project. And they rescued me. It first starts with, I mean, since I tend to work in a series, usually it's like an, it, I'll see something in the environment or something that just strikes me. And I'll you do, usually do a lot of um, like documentation start drawing or photographing or looking for that, what I tend to call like glitch or something elsewhere. And from there, I think, um, usually I find one that is like the perfect glitch. And then I go back and document that. And for instance, this piece, um, I found a, a perfect subdivision that um, the scale was completely wrong, the scale was completely off. And then knowing the scale of the room and the museum, everything just kind of started to fit together. And so when the idea and the actual meet, that's when it's like, okay, this is the project. And so from there, it just really gets into um, taking straight from the environment. So like in this project, I mean, I have an actual builder helping me who does this every day. We used the siding from the siding company, you know, the most common. Um, and a lot of research goes into what is, if I go to, say, look at 4,000 homes, what's the most common? What's that just every day? And so it gets to that, and that kind of informs really the materials on everything. So I don't really have like a set group of materials I use. Usually it's all kind of hinging on kind of what I found. 
Um, the materials are strictly informed by the idea. So, I mean, a lot of my work, I kind of jump around with a lot of different medium, uh, you know, clay series, metal series, um, but it's all hinging on that idea and that concept. So, sometimes I may want to do something in another material, but it always goes back to the concept and, you know, I don't know if vinyl siding is what I'd love to work with, but for this, it was essential. Since I do work in series, I think that one kind of leads me to the next. And this series, I think I had um, looked at object and places in a very separate way. And, and this is really the horizon and the like a big panoramic view. So I think as my series have grown, this has kind of been the largest one that I've done. Um, but I, I think if I break it down, to its underpinnings, it's, it's very common and very systematic of how I work. Well, since I am um, dealing a lot with environment and things, I, I've just recently moved to Las Vegas. So um, that environment has totally thrown me for a loop. Um, you know, I, I've been talking a lot about taking the mundane and turning it into a spectacle, and here, you know, the spectacle is the mundane. So I think that has really kind of influenced the way that I'm like looking at space again. Um, so that's been a very interesting shift. I would say overall film that I really enjoy is um, David Lynch's The Straight Story. And I think he hits on a lot of um, beautiful moments and scenes and he has this great way of doing a long shot in a very simple way that you can gather a lot of information and then you know some of his sound he really I think is able to put a viewer in a very specific space and I think I try to do that with my work sometimes to see it visually in a you know I think that I would say that and um, some of you know Tim Burton's of course his Edward Scissorhands um, I talked a lot about that the color um, Darjeeling Limited. I think some of those, the way he's able to put a, a screen together and make it an image, it almost could be a painting. If I was not an artist, um, I think I would have something to do with land. Um, maybe creative development. I don't even want to use the word development, but um, I think that the, it's, it's such a raw material and how like, uh, things can shift and change. I think probably in just the landscape, I would probably do something with land. My rear end was probably right in there and those cameras were like right, I mean like right underneath them. Oh,